KDW, where the lead in command is uh, Digital Mastermind, Dr. Badrul Khan. Let's take a look. I'm Nilima Mehra, the executive producer of Global Television Networks on Fox 5 Plus in Washington, D.C. You're watching KDW, Khan's Digital World, founder Dr. Badrul Khan. Welcome to KDW, Khan's Digital World on Fox 5 Plus, Washington, D.C. I'm Badrul Khan. Today, our episode is on the new normal. As you know, because of COVID-19, we are going through a big digital transformation globally. Now people are talking about office space since many employees working from home. So it has implication in all aspects of our life. Let's talk about office space. As you probably have noticed, HSBC Bank is cutting its global office space up to 40% as the best remote working program over the course of the COVID-19 pandemic has forced banks to reassess how they do business. The UK lender is making drastic cuts to its office space as the crisis has kept the majority of its workforce at home over the past year. Banks in Germany are rapidly cutting back on office space as a rising number of staff work from home, putting them at the vanguard of a global shift that could permanently change the way bankers work. Pandemic has driven millions of white collar workers out of the office, with many saying Working from home is here to stay. And what has that mean for the future of architectural design? The coronavirus pandemic has drastically altered the way humans relate to their space. And for architects and those in building construction, it is starting to change how they alter the space itself millions of office workers around the globe have transitioned to working from their homes since the start of pandemic in early 2020. As offices sit empty, many employers are thinking twice about the high cost of a communal working space. Google, Twitter, Microsoft, and many smaller companies have said they plan to keep some or all of their workforces working at home even once the pandemic is over. Health experts have also suggested this won't be the last pandemic we have to deal with. This sudden blending of the office space with the home is of particular concern to the people who design them. There is a quite a bit conversation around. Should companies allow employees to work from home? After all, many companies have been productive working from home. Employees have started to enjoy the flexibility while saving on commuting time and companies are finding it as an opportunity to save on office space. Well, for this particular issue, I was able to speak with Jasmine Ahmed. She is an expert in digital transformation. So I have some question for her. My question is, what is the optimal solution as we ease into the new normal? She says, personally, I highly value the dynamics of human connection that brings and provides strong relationship and innovation. As a leader, I'm constantly looking for my teams to operate more efficiently and co-create new solutions. Digital technology, as sophisticated as it may be, cannot replace 
the dynamics you can experience from human interaction. I suspect the new normal will ultimately become some form of hybrid model over time, providing a balance between working from home and going into the office. As companies look to reduce their brick and mortar footprint to reduce cost, she says, I do believe they will need to invest in optimizing tools and technology available for remote working conditions and continue to invest in office spaces. In efforts to encourage employees to spend time in the office, the space will need to provide necessary amenities to make the office welcoming and create an environment to promote collaboration and innovation. Savings realized from the immediate reduction in office space will ultimately get reinvested in better technology and tools for remote working environments and upgrading office space. Typically, time and time again, nothing is black and white and the pendulum will generally land somewhere in the middle. Well, folks, so today we talked about the office space for the new normal. Next episode, we're going to talk about how it will affect the way we do our business in education. We'll talk about that new normal in education in our next episode. Thank you for watching KDW.
process. For example, planning, design, production, evaluation teams. Review of instructional design process. That is planning, design, development, and evaluation. And evaluation of learning at the program and institutional levels. The management dimension deals with issues to the management of the learning environment, such as continuation, uploading, updating, upkeep of the learning environments. The management dimension can address issues related to quality control, budgeting, staffing, security, scheduling of the learning programs. The resource support dimension considers all of the technical and human resources support systems required to create and support meaningful online learning environments. Examples include web-based and telephone uh, technical support, as well as all the digital libraries, online tutorials, podcasts, groceries, frequently asked questions, facts, etc. The ethical dimension identifies the ethical issues that need to be addressed in design, development, implementation of e-learning resources, issues pertaining to the social and political influence, diversify uh, learner diversity, geographical diversity, bias, digital divide, information accessibility, etiquette, and um, other issues, legal issues, privacy, plagiarism, copyright, these are also discussed. Well, um, one question you may ask, how are institutions making use of the new learning framework? Do institutions need to address all parts of framework? The institution dimension addresses issues pertaining to administrative, academic, and linear support services. This dimension focuses on how organizations can disseminate knowledge and learning resources to the workers that is, time, that is timeline and cost effective. So, Thank you so much, and we'll talk about uh, further with new normal learning framework. Thanks.